healthy eating doesn't have to mean a constant supply of organic produce, free-range chicken, or expensive specialty items. Yeah, what's stocked in your pantry can help you sustain healthy eating habits all year long. And these staples, by the way, are number one when it comes to reducing inflammation that we hear so much about these days. Uh, Carolyn Williams is the author of Meals That Heal One Pot, and she's joining us now with her top five anti-inflammatory foods that you might actually have in your kitchen right now. Nice to see you. Great to see you. Hey, Carolyn, let me ask you something. Why is it so important, and we're hearing about it more and more, to be incorporating anti-inflammatory foods into your diet? Yeah, well, we, we know that we get a lot of junk probably in our diet, a lot of compounds we don't need, chemicals, maybe even toxins we don't need. But at the same time, we're also not getting a lot of the really good stuff that we need, and that's why anti-inflammatory foods are so key. They are packed with antioxidants. They're packed with compounds that reduce inflammation, um, that fight off viruses, that do good things in our body. So, you know, we may be getting a lot of the bad stuff, but at the same time, we're not getting all this really great stuff, mm -hmm. packing that in to help counteract some of the bad. All right, so Carolyn, let's go ahead and get to your top five foods. What's your number one on the list? Okay, number one that you already have in your pantry, I promise, is canned beans. Okay. Canned beans are a great fiber and protein source. They are inexpensive. They are a great, great way to add quick protein. And what's really key about beans is they're a good source of carbohydrates and a carbohydrate that's not going to cause those up and down blood sugar spikes. Mm -hmm. Those roller coaster effects that I, you have on blood, uh, that foods can have on blood sugar, particularly refined carbs and sugars, those are anti-inflammatory in nature when you start having those regularly and getting like those hangry episodes. Sure, sure. Beans with their fiber and protein are going to prevent that. They're one of the best carbs that you can eat from an inflammatory standpoint. And I guess another uh, one that can go with it also on your favorite is extra virgin olive oil. So how does that help out with your health? Yes. So we all know extra virgin olive oil or olive oil itself is healthy. but olive oil has a compound an anti-inflammatory compound that no other oils do it's called oleocanthal and in research it has been compared its anti-inflammatory effects have been compared to that of ibuprofen so anytime you can use good quality extra virgin olive oil in your salad dressings in your dishes that are you're cooking over low heat or no heat use it Okay, so number three on the list is tomato sauce. Does it matter if it's in a jar or a can, and or is it better to make it yourself? Yeah, you know, it really doesn't matter. And this is one of those crazy foods. We tend to think fresh is best. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily the case when it comes to, to tomatoes' anti-inflammatory benefits. Tomatoes are packed with vitamin C and a tons of, um, you know, and other antioxidants, but they, they also contain a compound known as lycopene. And lycopene has anti-inflammatory effects in the body, and it is more readily used and absorbed by the body when that lycopene in the tomato is heated. So your heat-treated tomato products, like your diced tomatoes, your tomato sauce, even your marineras, are great sources of that lycopene, much better than fresh. Um, if you, when you buy like a jarred marinara, you wanna look on the back and look at the ingredients. My trick is I look at the ingredients and say, okay, I'm not, buy I'm not making this at home, but if I was, are the ingredients the same as what I would see in a recipe? Right, and right. use that as kind of my trick. So omega-3 is this next item you have on your list. Uh, you said people are not getting enough of those. How can you go about doing that? Yeah, most all Americans, adults and kids are way below what, what yeah. is believed to be an adequate intake of those omega-3s. So your key sources are really going to be fish, your fattier cold water fish, like your salmon and your tuna. So when it comes to your pantry and your dry goods, your pouches or your cans of tuna and salmon are great options, shelf-stable options to keep on hand that are going to be a great source of those omega-3s and a great quick protein as well. All right. All right, so finally, aromatic spices. Are there any in particular that you recommend? Yes, you know, the more fragrant, the better. You hear a lot about turmeric, but pretty much all of your fragrant spices are going to have some benefit. So your cinnamon, your rosemary, your nutmeg, any, the more you can use aromatic spices and fresh herbs, the better.
No question about that. Carolyn, thanks so much for joining us and sharing tips today, especially this is a time of year where we're all going to be eating right. a lot. So we need some uh, good things yeah. to keep back in mind. To purchase Carolyn's book, Meals That Heal, or to see some of her recipes, visit carolynwilliamsrd.com.